Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Hello everybody and welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. My name is Dr. Leslie Phillips and I will be your host for the next hour. And we are broadcasting live on 101.7 FM across the Fraser Valley. And you can also live stream us on CIVL.ca. And I'll just let you know also that this is a talk show. It's a call-in show that focuses on metaphysics and spirituality. So we love uh, every week on this show between 7 and 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to talk about all sorts of topics in the realm of the intuitive, the mystical, the metaphysical and the spiritual. And of course, sometimes we have guests on and sometimes we have a topic of the week. And tonight we have a lovely guest that I'm going to introduce you to in a moment. And of course, the usual format is as well that we will take your calls or answer your email questions. So the phone line is tonight a bit different. Um, no, actually, I'm going to tell you the phone line is 604-504-7441, extension 4142. Um, but actually tonight it's best if you email info at drlesliephillips.com. So that's info at drlesliephillips.com. So without further ado, let me introduce the guest I have on the show this evening. Her name is Jennifer Rezio. And she is the founder of Soul Language. So the website soullanguage.us. She's a master intuitive. She uses her intuitive skills to help raise consciousness. And Soul Language is a paradigm, I believe, that she's um, a term that she's created that uh, helps us put the tangibility to soul. And she's also the author of a couple of books, which you can get access to on Amazon. One is called Soul Language, Consciously Connecting to Your Soul for Success. And the other is called A Little Book of Prayers. And so Jennifer's on the show tonight. She's going to inspire us and educate us about creating a conscious connection with your soul and with the divine. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I'm so excited. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you for um, sharing this time with us. And I, you know what? My first question I'm going to ask you is what your definition of the soul is. And I'll tell you why. I get a lot of uh, people who actually don't know what the difference is between my intuition, my mind, my ego, my higher self, my soul, and so on. So what's your definition of the soul? What? And I love that question because I get that question a lot. So my definition of, of the soul is that essential nature. And so if we look at that God, universe, tree, Bob, cupcake, whatever you want to call it, as the ocean, our soul is the drop in that ocean. So it's our essential nature of divinity. It's our individual cake batter of the giant cake batter. Um, And intuition is is really the way the soul kind of helps you understand, gives you inspiration, gives you messages. Higher self to me is that thing that's You know, some people call it God, some people call it universe. I had a client call it it Bob. It is that thing that um, is way beyond us, but yet we are still a part of it. So I hope that definition helps a lot of people get clear for themselves. That's great. Thank you. And so, and then explain to them how is that different to the personality that they're inhabiting in the current, in the body that they have right now? So... Um, personality is our interpretation of soul and a mixture of our experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that's what that's about. It, it comes, it's almost like, for me, it's a really shiny coat that we put on 
to express our essential nature. And sometimes we do it really good, you know, full expression, and sometimes we don't. It, you know, it, it's so funny because we're trying to put words to things that are, are so sometimes intangible and that we can only really do the best in our human words. And what I really like everyone to know is that they have to also kind of come up with their own definitions that resonate with them, mind, body, and spirit. So, so often people will go, well, you know, I call it universe, I call it God, uh, which is much different than personality, you know. And I'm like, well, what name resonates most with you? Because that's what you identify with. That's what you resonate with. Um, and, you know, having this personal relationship with your soul and your higher self is key. And I think when you do, that allows that personality to be expressed in consciousness rather than programming. A lot of our personality is based on past experiences and beliefs that aren't sustainable. And I love ego because without ego um, or that little M in our mind, we wouldn't get up off the couch. Um, and I like to get up off the couch. I like to participate in this world. The key here is to have the personality or the ego part follow the soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we do, life becomes a lot easier and a lot more full of grace. Um, and magical. Thank you. That, th- those are some fantastic definitions. And, and I agree with you. Uh, you know, everyone has their own personal concept of God. And for some people, the word God wouldn't be in resonance because they would have some, a filter over what that means. And so, so that's a, that's a great, um, explanation that you gave us. And, and also, you know, you said, well, you know, sometimes our human language is insufficient to really convey some of these concepts and so that brings me on to my next question which is well okay so we've talked about our human language our words our linear logical thought patterns that we have so what is soul language (laughs) so soul language puts tangibility to soul and and the reason why is that human beings love words for things and when we have words to express that essential nature, to express what we know deep down to be true, it allows us to create a more conscious connection. It allows us to understand when we are expressing ourselves consciously with full soul or when we are expressing it conditionally. And so that's what soul language is. It's actually putting some words to the three core energies of your soul, which are mission, how you feel that mission, and then your soulful personality. And what that really means is how your soul prefers to go through life. And so when we identify someone's soul languages, from there, I always come up with a one-liner for their soul. And that becomes their mile marker of consciousness for themselves. They understand then that if they're being and doing that, there'll be a lot less struggle in their life. So my one-liner for my soul is I create balance for myself because it all starts at home and for others with love, integrity, and courage. And that's what I have to go, okay, so am I in balance for myself? Am I being courageous for myself? Am I being loving for myself? And that becomes a good, very simple tool to go, oh, no, I'm kind of failing, no judgment. I'm just not making a grade there. And then what do I get to kind of shift inside to put that consciousness into my life? And so what soul language is, is putting tangibility to the three core energies of your soul. And there's 107 different soul languages across those three categories. Yeah, I read that on your website, 107 different um, um, categories. So that's interesting. So how did you come up with that? (laughs) <laughs> the short answer, God. <laughs> the, the long answer, um, I just sat down and started asking questions, and I started getting all of this information, and then I started identifying people. <clears throat> and the way we identify, and I say we because now I train people to use soul language in, the, in their sacred work, is through therapeutic kinesiology or muscle testing, mm. which really means with a person's permission, my body becomes the pendulum on their soul's behalf. And when I started identifying people, 
people who knew nothing about soul language, who knew nothing about the 107 different languages, who knew nothing about the three categories, I was identifying this woman, and I said, okay, so one of your soul languages is called partner. How does that resonate with you? And what, what she said, Leslie, was before we got on the phone, I asked myself, if Jen asked me my soul language, what would it be? She said, and I wrote down partner. And I have to tell you, Leslie, I burst out hysterically crying. Now, I have warrior energy. So when a warrior cries, it's, it's kind of heavy duty. She's like, oh, my God, are you okay? I was like, you just told me I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. And what happened was that kept happening time and time again. I would hear, like, are you in my head? Oh, my God, you just put words to to what I've known all of my life. Wait, what? I can accept this? This, this is divinity? You know? And... What I started to notice is that when people started, and including myself, started to connect with their soul via their soul languages, um, it became an easier way to connect because we have a structure around it. And human beings love structure, even innovative renegades, which I'm one. We love structure because it gives us an easier path to follow. And so, you know, and what I love about soul language also, too, is it's living and breathing. So those definitions are, because are, everyone gets a, a definition of their soul languages, they are always updated because consciousness is always growing. Mm-hmm. And so all, more information is always coming in about those individual languages. Mm. You know, it, it kind of makes sense to me because it's almost like a personal a personalized mantra to help you focus on your your mission and your fulfillment of that mis- mission as it is right here, right now, this moment. Because I think, um, you know, I know a lot of the people that I talk to and I help have trouble focusing. because of the the busy monkey mind and the emotional levels of the body and all of that and so it sounds like it would be a very helpful thing to sort of have this touchstone that says this is me this is the core of who i am yeah and i bet you deal with highly intuitive people which even have that kind of another layer of that because they're receiving information not always their own, right? Mm-hmm. So highly intuitive information, it's like sometimes there's this, you know, band of radio emissions over their head, and so they're getting all this information. And, and most of the time, highly intuitive people and highly innovative people don't know, wait, is that my idea to focus on? Or am I just hearing static? And mm-hmm. it's okay if you just hear static. That's not your kind of idea to take forward. So... When we have that that kind of structure, it does allow you to understand the, as you put it, the monkey mind versus soul talking to you. Right. And it also understands where your patterns are showing up and how to kind of rewrite those patterns. So what I what I love to also teach people is how to collaborate with the how. You know, most people will go, okay, so I don't know how to do that. And I'm like, well, your portion is so little. Every action, before you can take an external action, there's an internal action. So I'll give you an example. So to say you were, you know, you wanted to write a book. We'll use that example. So say you wanted to write a book and you get this kind of, okay, I'm inspired to write a book. And then you you struggle with the how you do that. Well, the external, you know, inspired action is to write the book. Mm-hmm. But if you're struggling on the how of that, there's an internal action that has to happen first. And internal actions are either a letting something go, an activation, which is like a flipping on of a switch, an allowance, which is an opening up, or an acceptance slash forgiveness. And so sometimes I want to go and do a video and I feel that resistance. That gives me the opportunity to tune in with my soul and go, okay, What's resisting here? Do I have to accept anything? Do I have to let something go? Am I, do I have to allow it? And it becomes this beautiful dance of how to co-create the, with the how. And that's all guidance from the soul. So when you have that structure to understand how your soul wants to create via your, you know, we call them your soul language team. 
um, collaboration with the universe becomes a lot easier. You know, then you get to be a lot, do a little, and then you have. And I think people try to do that reverse. You know, they try mm-hmm. to have, do, so they can have, so they can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. So, um, what? Now, of course, you can't give all of our listeners a, 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 a one-on-one session over the airwaves, but can you teach them, is there something that they can do right now to create a more conscious connection with their soul? Yeah, totally. Would you like to play with me on this? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, if I use words, everyone who's listening, including you, Leslie, that you don't kind of understand, you know, just kind of allow your body to get on the bus with me. So we're going to connect to your soul utilizing your divine intelligence, which is another word for your body. Your body knows exactly how to get you into a consciousness level. It doesn't have free will. It will actually do it if we get on the bus, so to speak. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to work with your soul and work with your divine intelligence to give you a feeling of the baseline of your soul. And so what happens is any time you're in fear, you can pause and tune back into the baseline of your soul to, to really feel loved and supported. So again, get ready to get on the bus with me. So I want everyone just to take a deep breath. And I want you to ask divine intelligence to align body and soul. Align your earth star with your heaven star. And then in a way that is vividly and clear to you, ask divine intelligence and your soul to vividly and clearly explain, show, provide you with an understanding of the baseline of your soul. And I'll share my answer, Leslie, if you'll share yours. Sure. <laughs> well, although mine was a very strange symbol, actually, so we might have to translate it. Um, so the symbol reminded me, I do some paintings and they're quite abstract. So it reminded me of um, some of the symbolism in my abstract paintings. And the closest thing in terms of a human thing that it would be is it, it reminded me of a little bit of a jet engine um, or it also reminded me a little bit of um, this is going to sound str- well, strange but um, uh, like a um, you know the idea of propulsion of the of, of the jet engine and there are some yeah. sea creatures like um, squids and cephalopods <laughs> That have yeah. that propulsion thing, yeah. Um, or it also maybe reminded me of a chakra, and it wasn't explicitly an image of any of those, but it was that kind of idea. Beautiful, I love it. I love this. First of all, for so many reasons. One, thank you so much for participating. Two, because so often we will get an answer from our soul, and just sometimes we have to ask another question. Your soul uses your database. In this case, it used your database. And and in another really great way, I think you've been painting the baseline of your soul. You're just not aware of it. And now there's a new awareness, right? Right. And then it's not going to use my database because you wouldn't understand that. To me, and let me know if this resonates with you, all that says to me is, oh, my God, you're a powerhouse. Like, there's a lot of power in that propelling forward. And there's also a lot of um, openness and air, and it feels very um, strong. Yeah, fast moving. <laughs> right? Yeah. So does that resonate? Oh, definitely. Well, I'm, I, I am a powerhouse. I, I do pack a lot of power, and I, you know, I, I move quickly through stuff, so that's true. Yeah, change, change, yeah. change, create, 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 so yeah. Right, and so anytime, you know, and we all do this, we will all step into fear again because we are human, and it's okay. You know, we don't, it's my belief that you don't want to eradicate fear. What fear does is that's an opportunity for you to turn towards something bigger and higher 
that is an opportunity for you to expand. And I know sometimes when we're in fear or there's a challenge, that's really hard to, to remember. And I've had those times myself. That is an, an example of when you are in fear or doubt or, you know, whatever your big theme of challenge is, that's when everyone can pause and tune back into that baseline of their soul. And if they have to do it a million times a minute, you do it a million times a minute until you shift. Now, my, mine was, of course, and I heard the Beatles sing it, all you need is love. Mm. And, you know, and I've asked that question probably a million times. And I, I keep getting the same answer with different images. And, you know, I love that because we can keep asking a question the same question a million times and keep getting a deeper understanding of that answer. So thanks so much for playing with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting to see. Um, so listeners, if you if you did that exercise with us and you want to email me at info at drlesliephillips.com with what you got as your answer, that would be fun to take a look at that. Um, okay, so let's ask you a personal question now. So, how has connecting to your soul transformed your life? Well, um, when I tell people this and clients this, they go, really? I was really, really angry. I was working in um, public relations. I knew that there was something bigger inside of me. Um, I wasn't allowed to talk to clients at some point because everything out of my mouth sounded defensive, including, hey, can you pass that pen? They'd be like, why are you so defensive? I'm like, I asked for a pen. Um, I was, to say I was miserable is an understatement. Um, when I started connecting to my soul, my life changed. I just started feeling and knowing that I was loved and supported and whole and complete. Um, I went back um, a couple years later after I, I left the company I was working for, she's my best friend, and uh, her second, you know, her, like, lieutenant, so to speak, um, was having a baby, and she went to labor, like, four weeks early or something crazy like that, and she called me in a panic. She's like, oh, my God, she just went into labor, and there's uh, stuff everywhere, and can you just come in and help me, because you know how all this works, and I was like, sure. And I answered the phone, and I uh, was a client, and I passed them all along to Erin. And I hear Erin's portion of the conversation going, yeah, that's Jennifer. No, that's Jennifer. Yes, I'm sure that's Jennifer. And she had a conversation. She hung up. I was like, what was that about? They are like, did not recognize your voice, did not know who you were. You've changed completely that, that people that you dealt with before don't know who you are because you're that transformed. Mm-hmm. And that's what connecting with my soul has done. That's what it continues to do. Um, I think one of the, the biggest things, you know, my greatest desire was always, you know, to have this great love. And that was a p- pretty big painful process for me. Um, and by connecting with my soul and really understanding I'm whole and complete, by having this deep collaboration with divinity, you know, that allowed me to open up and and find my peace. And we've been together for the last two years, and it's a relationship, and we both have to work on it. And he's amazing, and he just, he gets me, and I get him. And and honestly, Leslie, I never thought it was going to happen or possible. And that interaction with the soul, that, that continuing going in and having conversations with God, I believe allowed that that experience to take shape. So connecting with the, with your soul and, and whatever you call your higher power does have a profound impact on your life. Mm-hmm. Um, I play this new game, um, you know, am I blaming or am I claiming? Um, and I notice, you know, when I'm blaming, it's hard to create or manifest what you want. You know, when you're declaring, this is true, I'm whole and complete, you know, your life shifts. So I hope that answers your question. Mm, Yes, it does. And uh, so thank you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a commercial break. And after the break, we'll keep chatting. And I actually have lots of uh, 
people wrote in with questions today. And um, so before we go to the break, I'll just ask you, we've got a whole bunch of questions. Some are spiritually focused, some are health, some are career, some are relationship. Do you have a preference for, for what? No, not at all. <laughs> all right, good. Well, we'll just, we'll just take a lucky dip when we come back from the, uh, the ads. So we'll be back soon, listeners, after these few short messages. And you've been listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie on 101.7 FM and tonight I've been talking to Jennifer Rezio and having a very pleasant conversation about soul language. Hello everyone, welcome back to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. My name is Dr. Leslie Phillips and I'm your host. We are here every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. on Pacific Standard Time on 101.7 FM. And this evening on Unlocking Your Truth, we're joined by Jennifer Maurizio, who is the founder of Soul Language. And we've been chatting to Jennifer uh, about Soul Language and I have more questions, which I think I might save for the end because I think I'll share some of the listeners' questions right now. And we've got loads of them, and, uh, and but there are some which seem like they fit in with our discussion topic quite well. Uh, so, so here's a question from a lady, we'll call her Jane, and what she says is, I deeply feel I am a light worker, but I'm also an introvert. What is my calling to be of service? So she's having a bit of trouble sort of <laughs> connecting those okay. two together. What would you call her, Jane? Okay, so Jane, you're not going to believe this, but I am an introvert. In fact, my friend Christine goes up, it's 58 minutes, time for Jennifer to go. <laughs> like, I'm an introvert. You can be a, a light worker and an introvert at the same time. So here's a question that you can ask yourself. So in your quiet time, you're going to connect with your soul, and you're going to go, okay, give me tangible examples of my healing abilities. And then you're just going to listen. And if you don't get anything right away, that's okay. You're going to pause. You're going to go and take a shower. You're going to wash some dishes. You're going to keep your mind busy. And something is going to pop. Um, most light workers, in my experience, are the ones I hang out with. A lot of them are introverts. I think that um, a lot of them are used to connecting and being, you know, going within. Um, so you're right on par. And, you know, sometimes we have this idea of what something should be instead of what it truly is. So another question that you could ask yourself and the divine is to guide me, lead me, show me to how I can utilize my experiences or, or offer my way of being of service. So I hope that helps you. Thank you very much. That was a really, really great answer. And I'll just add, I'm going to add one tiny little, little bit, which is tagged onto the end of what you just said, which is to do with expectations about what something, something should be. Uh, it looks like you picked up a little bit of, uh, invalidation along the way of your life journey, a little bit of invalidation, unworthiness, but, um, it's only there because you're measuring yourself against these expectations and it, it's not, so, so anytime you're hitting that, self-worth stuff it's not you <laughs> it's just some stuff that you've picked up so all right so let's see we have a you know I, I actually think you've already answered this question in a general way but let's <laughs> ask it again so this lady they, we always give them um a, a pseudonym so we'll call i love that yeah we'll call her mary and she said What's a good technique for understanding messages? Sometimes I get messages that I don't understand. I love that. Again, if you uh, if you get a message that you don't understand, you get to ask another question. Um, and it's just about, <clears throat> excuse me, tuning in and going, okay, I don't understand that one. Can you give me another example of it? Can you give it to me in a word? Can you give it to me in an image? Can you give it to me in an experience of my life? And you keep asking the question until you get an answer, and sometimes you have to let a question go. My first experience of this work was um, I had a dream where 
I had this watch, and I had to change the watch. Now, as I tell you this, you're going to go, boom, you should have known this. Janet's right there in front of you. But I couldn't understand what that dream meant. And for weeks, I couldn't understand what that dream meant. And I was walking in the city, and I was, and I'm talking out loud to myself. And I go, okay, I have a watch. It's time. It's time to change. And I'm like, oh, my God, I cannot believe that it took me three weeks to understand that my soul is telling me it is time to change. So I think the first thing you want to do is try not to have to get or understand everything because we get a ton of messages, you know, a day. And then start to understand your database. You know, I always like to start with a simple question so we can understand our database, understand how your soul and the divine is communicating with you. And it's a simple question. <clears throat> it's what do I need to know today? And then you just jot some down. And then at the end of the day, you come back and you read what you jot down. That way you can understand how your database is working. So I hope that helps, Mary. Thank you. That That's a, a really, really great information for her. And of, of course... Yeah, you you don't have to you don't have to get the first image that you're you're shown. You know, you can just say, "Well, show me another one." <laughs> exactly, mm-hmm. it's, um, as as uh, Jennifer said, and of course, Miss um, Mary, I, I I know you, and I know you also. One thing you're forgetting is to place your consciousness in the center of your head, so that you're operating from your clairvoyance and not your not your intellect. So it looks like you're getting a little bit caught in your intellect as well. And it's much easier to translate our intuitive messages um, when we're not in our intellect. Um, so yeah, and you know what I use, Leslie? I always ask divine intelligence too. I ask divine intelligence to allow my mind to follow my heart. Mm. And we'll see the shift in that energy. And I love what you said about the center of your head that's really beautiful so thank you yeah, thank you now let's see because you were just you were just, i've got two questions about dreams and you were sharing one of your dreams so maybe maybe the next, <laughs> the next one's going to be a dream question so this lady let's call her sally and she says i had a dream last night i looked up into the sky and i saw two moons in a blue sky I was showing it to one of my nieces or nephews. From from what I looked up online, it may have to do with feeling pulled in two different directions and with feminine energy. Uh, I made that connection with recent events of my life, opening up to my mum and things I've recently started doing. My question is, what is the conflict here or the symbolism of the two moons? What does it mean personally to me? So, uh, so, um, Sally, the first thing I want to offer you is that um, it feels like a conflict of actually understanding and accepting that the power is within you, that you don't have to be always in conflict. It feels like you're almost like separating your power instead of coming into its fullness of that sacred feminine. Um, that's my feeling of it. Um, so the question I would offer you and your soul is, what would you have to accept for those two moons to be one? Mm-hmm. That feels, that feels right. It feels, that feels exactly right. It's about, it's about, um, exactly bringing together separate parts. Yeah. You know, when I um, offer people a prayer to do that, and it's simply, I co-create with, no, that's a different one, let me start over again. With divine love, I call back all of those pieces I gave away consciously or unconsciously. I call it back with divine love, will, and grace. And I'm also going to offer you the first one, which is... Um, to clear any energy that you keep collecting that's not yours. And as I co-create with divine that all things alien and conditional leave my mind, body, and spirit at once and return to their rightful place with divine love, will, and grace. 
because it also sounds like, Sally, like you um, don't clear your energy as much as you can. And that's also why you seem to be divided. Great, really great information. Thank you. So now I'm going to, maybe I'll ask a health question. So this lady, let's call her Kelly, <laughs> says, I love listening to your show and um, she wants to ask this question. She's developed food intolerances and she wants to know if her food intolerances are related to some stuck beliefs or blocks and if it's possible to clear them and can we lead her in the right direction? I I believe everything can be cleared. So the short answer is yes. Um, you know, with food intolerances, you know, that's about taking nutrients in. Um, and the first thing I would ask her is what's preventing her from or what belief is in the way of her believing that she deserves to be fully nurtured, fully supported, fully loved, um, and to experience joy. I mean, I know that's a three-part question. I, I'm infamous for three-part question. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I would ask her to discover. You know, what is currently in the way of you believing that you can be fully nurtured and loved? And, of course, um, it's probably, you know, that you don't deserve or self-worth. Um, so I would tune in. I would do this. I would first activate your heart with divine intelligence. Activate the consciousness of love in my heart. And then I would offer that love to yourself, including the stomach and the digestive area. So it would be like divine intelligence. Create a conscious connection and activate the consciousness of love in my heart. And then when you felt that, Divine intelligence, I offer this love in my heart to myself, to my stomach, and to my digestive area. And see how that occurs. Thank you. That's great. And I'll just add another couple of things that I picked up on. And uh, a couple of things. I, I'm seeing a lot of whatever it is, It's it's obviously it's stems from the past because there's a lot of past time energy in your digestive system and some fear and resistance. And one of the things that came up for me was a lot of responsibility taking on, it's like you're taking on too much, more than you can digest, and so you're resisting some of it. So in your life, uh, just take a look around at how much responsibility you're taking for, for other people. So that's what came up for me. Beautiful. Yeah, and um, let's continue on the beliefs. So there's another lady, let's call her D, <laughs> says, My question has to do with clearing the past. Any attachments or deeply held patterns, how to clear and remove them once and for all? Um so I'm sure, actually, you've given some good advice on that question already, but um, what would you say to this lady, Dee? Well, there's a lot of conditions there, right, to clear and remove them once and for all. Every time we set up this condition within us, we step, we step right into separation. We step into we're not whole and complete. So instead of trying to clear that past experience. What if you were to go back and offer yourself the knowing that you're whole and complete in that experience? So it could be something like this. Right here, right now, I have a willingness to know that I'm whole and complete. Where there has been pain and suffering in my past, there is now only love and only wholeness and completeness. Then you can also go through an individual past experience and sit in it, sit in a movie theater and see that past experience on the screen and remove the attachment. 
And, you know, some past experiences, this is much easier to do than other past experiences, right? But it's remembering that you are whole and complete as you view that past experience to know that that no longer has power from you. And you can do that um, prayer that we did earlier, that calling back of the power from that past experience. That should help you move out of that um, groove in that record. Also, some of the core experiences of the unworthiness of non-trust, those are just opportunities for you to accept that you're whole and complete even though you're having that experience. And so I would look at the past experiences big theme is at the end of the day all of those experiences resulting in you believing that you're not whole and complete or you not trusting yourself or you not being able to speak up for yourself. And that's what I would work for rather than trying to clear those past experiences. So I would then activate, let's just say it's um, about, um, sorry, there's two there. So let's just say that it's about not feeling whole and complete and not trusting yourself. So each day I would go divine intelligence, fill my body with a feeling and knowing, that I am trustworthy and I am whole and complete. And in doing so, I release any attachment to those past experiences. Another thing that you can do when you start to notice that you're operating from that past experience, you could say to yourself, if I knew I was whole and complete, or you can fill in your blank there, if I knew I was trustworthy for myself, what would I say? What would I be? What would I do and what would I express here? And then you can take action on one of those answers to those questions. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I have to go, unfortunately, to another break. Uh, But when we come back, we will perhaps share one or two more questions and, um, and then let the listeners know how they can get in contact with you. So listeners, you've been listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. I've been joined by Jennifer Orizio, who's the founder of Soul Language. And we're here every Tuesday live on 101.7 FM from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. My name's Dr. Leslie Phillips, and you're listening live on 101.7 FM across the Fraser Valley. I am here this evening with Jennifer Orezio, the founder of Soul Language. And we've been talking all about soul language and what it is and helping you to make a deeper connection with your soul and answering your questions. And I'm going to ask one more listener question. And this is actually for one of our regular listeners. She phones up all the time about... um, She has uh, had some long-standing issues with her reproductive area. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where the doctors would like her to have an operation. And she's been saying no for actually for years (laughs) and working energetically on it for years. And so every once in a while, she phones up to just check in and get, get a look at what's going on. And I think it might be nice for this lady, we call her Susie, to to have another perspective. So... How about, um, her question is just my reproductive area is a work in progress, so I always like to sort of get a look at this. <laughs> I wonder if you have some suggestions that perhaps she hasn't thought of that she can do about this situation. Um, so, the first thing I'd like you to say is stop saying it's a work in progress. Start saying it's whole and complete. And there's you know, it feels like you have so much creativity inside of you that it's kind of locked up there. So what do you want to create that if you do, it will help heal that reproductive area? It feels like you want to give birth to something um, big. So what would that look like? What would that feel like? Um and I'm, I'm shaking my head because, you know, 
there's just a part of you that hasn't accepted that sacred power inside of you, and there's no judgment there. I think there's a part of us all that hasn't. So what would you, what love would you have to bestow on yourself in order to do that? So I hope that helps. I forgot our, you know, pseudonym for this woman. So um, <laughs> we call her Susie. Well, thank Susie. you. She doesn't feel. She so doesn't feel like a Susie. Yeah, no, well, she. Yeah, that's not what her name is. But <laughs> yeah. um, but she she uses that pseudonym every time she comes on. So she'll rec- she'll recognise we're talking about her. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. I'm not going to weigh in there because um, I, I've, I've given her lots of lots of looks, and I think it's really nice to get a, a slightly different a different perspective. So, thank you. Now, um, I am going to let's see. What we had a few things, a bit of ground we wanted to cover this evening, and I'm just going to check in and see if we covered it all because we've been talking about um, the kind of blocks that people can experience to connecting with their soul and um, one of them was fear and another one was living up to expectations and unworthiness. Are there any other ones that come to the tip of your tongue? Yeah, it's also about what I'm also getting is this: there's this whole kind of mixed icky ball around accepting and utilizing your power correctly. I mean, there's there's no... I always like to say there's no such thing as good magic or bad magic. It's all magic. It's your intention behind it. And I think so many of us have um, had past experiences of what people would say of abuse of power, um, and we're so kind of timid this time around to use our power correctly. And my statement to those individuals is simple. No one who's ever been concerned about abusing power, has abused power. So what would it take to finally accept um, that your power is divinity and you're going to utilize it in your greatest good of all? <clears throat> Sorry, I've been talking since 9 o'clock this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I, I also think I'm clearing someone's divine voice. So it's also about accepting that you're safe to utilize your divine voice and that you're safe to receive it. So I hope that supports somebody out there. Thank you. And um, maybe a slightly rela- related thing, and that's come up a little bit, is that we all tend to judge ourselves so harshly, don't we, um, when we don't live up to our own expectations of ourselves and heal ourselves perfectly and all of that. So how can listeners let go of judgment? I think it's a practice. I think this is all a practice. So noticing, you know, your big area of judgment and just pausing. And then what I always tell clients, very simple, when you notice you're judging yourself, um, and you might notice that you're judging someone outside of yourself first. So then um, you pause and you say three good, nice things about yourself or three nice things about that person to yourself. Um and that will help let go of judgment. I think most of the time we judge because we're afraid of something. So that's another good question to ask. What am I afraid of here that I'm judging? And what do I get to accept to move from judgment to love? Um, and sometimes we can't just move from judgment to love. So what would you get to accept to move from judgment to neutrality? Because in that conscious of neutrality, doors start to open and you start to see challenges when you experience one, not as a result of your essential nature, but just as a result of, oh, it's a challenge. What new choice can I make here? And it becomes a, a very exciting playing field for you. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. So we're getting close to wrapping up. We um, usually clear that clear out of the studio at five two for the next show. So I want to ask you to just tell the listeners how they can connect with you. Beautiful, thank you. You can access me through the website soullanguage.us. Each one of you is uh, entitled to a discovery session. It's a half an hour. There's a link there. One of your soul languages will be identified. I answer my own email and I pick up my own phone. So please feel free to reach out at soullanguage.us. And I'm also, you can access me on Facebook at Jennifer Rizio. Um, and please feel free to reach out or 
you know, if you want to share that baseline, your experience, I'd love to hear from you. Oh, yes, I forgot to check my phone and see if anyone could send <laughs> that in. Um, oh, I'm not seeing anything, but the the, um, the connection's not that good in the studio. But anyway, Jennifer, thank you so much. I have really enjoyed our conversation this evening. And you have a, just a beautiful, soothing, gentle energy. And, you know, some of the solutions that you offer to our listeners, they're so, they're just so comforting and gentle. And, um, and I thank you so much for that. And, um, I guess I'll connect with you tomorrow by email just to touch bases and say thank you again. Um, well, thank you. It's been an honor and, and that's high praise coming from you because I know what your soul looks like and feels like. So thank you. I'm, I'm really grateful. Me too. So thank you so much for coming on the show. And listeners, you've been listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And my name's Dr. Leslie Phillips, obviously. And you can tune in again next week uh, on next tuesday at 7 to 8 p.m pacific standard time you can also go and check out the podcasts on drlesliephillips.com thank you for joining us you've been listening to another unlocking your truth podcast by dr leslie phillips for more information go to our website at drlesliephillips.com that's drlesliephillips.com where you can ask questions or send her an email, and there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again.